Hello, I'm Eric Renault and this is a video for Photolia, the stock photography community. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Photoshop's crop tool. So let's jump in and see what's what. So here I am in Photoshop and I've got my image all ready to go. Of course, it comes from Photolia, details up on the screen. And I've chosen this one for many reasons, but not least of all, it shows a lovely family with their crops because we're looking at the crop tool. You see, I don't just throw these things together. Let's go and get the crop tool. It has the keyboard shortcut of C and it is the fifth icon down in the toolbar. Now, as soon as I click on it, we get a bounding box around my image. We can't see that very clearly. So I've got this black layer. I'm going to switch that one on and we can see the bounding box. Now, just like all the transform kind of tools in Photoshop, we can grab hold of any corner and transform it or any of the sides here and transform it too. We can go back by pressing the escape or this kind of no entry sign or Ghostbusters sign at the top. Also, when you're dealing with any kind of transform, there's a couple of keyboard shortcuts. So shift will constrain the proportion. So I'm going to click shift and then click and drag it in and you'll see it constrains it. If I press alt, just press escape there. If I press alt and click, it will go from the middle. Okay, let go and I'm going to press escape. And if I press shift and alt, it will constrain the proportions and transform from the center. So all those things are available to me. I'm just going to click the Ghostbusters sign there and turn off my black. And now let's look at it in practice. So now I'm going to click on the corner and drag it in. I've got none of my modifier keys. And you'll see now that the image moves around, my crop stays in the middle. Now this doesn't work the same in older versions of Photoshop. More of that in just a moment. But you can see how I can just make this any way that I like. And once I've got my crop, if I move my mouse outside of the bounding box, you'll see I get this curled arrow. Now this means that I can rotate. So I can, now I can rotate the crop. But again, it's going to keep the crop straight and uh, rotate the image within our crop. You also notice that the crop resizes, so it stays within the image. There we go. And if you want to straighten something up by eye, However, I'm going to press escape. You can also straighten in the crop tool too. Now in earlier versions of Photoshop, you'll find the straighten tool as a tool all of its own, but now it's part of the crop tool and it's just here, the straighten tool. So if I click on that and then choose something that's supposed to be straight, let's say this tool here, and then just let go, it'll automatically straighten up the image, crop it in and make sure it's all part of the image. And I could click the tick to accept that because I don't want to, that's a bit lopsided now. So I'm going to click the Ghostbusters sign. Now, while we're up at the top, let's have a look at some other bits and bobs. First of all, the ratio. We can choose what ratio it is. For example, five by seven. So now it's automatically gone and cropped it in to a five by seven. Now this doesn't necessarily mean five by seven inches. It's just a ratio, remember. Now, once I'm there, I can rotate it, should I wish. There we go or I can make it smaller, but it will stay in the right ratio. And you'll notice there, I cropped it down so much so that it switched it round. If I bring the mouse over, it will switch it back to the right way around as well. There we go. Let's go one by one. Square is very popular again at the moment. So let's uh, bring the square out. And then once I've got the kind of the crop that I'm after, if I want to just tweak it a little bit, I can come into the image, click down, and I can start moving the image around within the square or whatever crop size I have. And then click the tick, should I wish to accept it. I don't, let's click the Ghostbusters. Right, I'm gonna clear this down. So click clear, there we go. And I'm gonna go back to how I want to be by pressing the escape key. We're all back to normal. There's a couple of other bits and bobs. Let me just click down on the image to get our bounding box again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and have a look at this one. And you'll notice that I get all kinds of different grids. So at the moment, I've got a rule of thirds. Let me just go into my move tool. Don't crop that, thank you. And put my black on again, and then let's have a look at these. So I've got a grid here, or I can then have the diagonal, the triangle, the 
golden ratio and the golden spiral. And what's really cool here is as I start to bring in my crop, the golden ratio will adjust accordingly, of course, but then if I go into portrait rather than landscape, it will turn itself around as well. Quite handy. Press escape just for a second. And let's have a look at this one here. Now we can see how the crop tool works in earlier versions. We can use classic mode. I'm going to click on that. And if I go back to my image, I can now set out my crop. I have to draw it out this time. And then if I rotate, you'll notice it's the crop that's rotating rather than the image. And we worked like this for many, many years. If you're new to Photoshop, it probably seems a bit strange, but it's surprising how used to it we were. I'm going to undo that. Let's go back to unclassic mode. Now we can show cropped area. Let's untick that and see what it means. So there, if I go along like this and let go, where it's been cropped won't be visible, which is okay, but it doesn't help us when we can't see the, the image itself. Let's bring that back on. Auto center preview. Well, if it doesn't, then what will happen is we'll sort of be free formed within that and we'll be moving the crop around. Let's pop that back on. There we go. Enable crop shield. Well, that darkened down the outsides of our crop. And we can bring that in and we can see the crop and we can see outside. When that's enabled, and I will re-enable it, we can match the color of the canvas for that, or we can have a custom color. And I'm gonna choose maybe a blue for demonstration purposes. Click OK, and now it's blue on the outside. I'm gonna say no to that. And I'm also gonna put that back to match canvas. And last but by no means least, this delete cropped pixels. At the moment it's ticked, which means if I bring in my crop and say yes, and then try and crop that back out again, there's nothing there for it to crop. So I'm gonna press escape on that and I'm gonna go back just by pressing Control, Alt and Z just to go back to where I was. And now I'm going to turn that off and then crop again click the tick, and then when I come back onto it, you'll see straight away that I have the image that I can then crop back into. And this is my preferred way to work. Obviously, we want it to be as non-destructive as possible. Right, there we go. Let's uh, make this the crop that I was sort of after. There we go, round by the spade there, and click the tick. Now, while I was messing around there, you may have noticed that I added some area around. So let's have a look at that. The last sort of hidden gem of the crop tool, really. Let's just pop all these back to how I like them, make sure they're all as they should be. Again, invoke the crop tool. Just click down on my image. And now let's make this as I want it to be, near the spade, down there a little bit. And then I'm going to drag this corner out, sort of around there-ish. And now if I let go, and click the tick or press return on my keyboard, I've now added canvas. That hasn't shifted the image up, even though I did take some off the top and the left-hand side. I can just add canvas anywhere I like. I could, in fact, add it all the way around the outside to make a nice border. But in my case, I've got some uh, other pictures that I can put here as well. So let's, uh, let's do that while I'm just chatting away. Well, that's the crop tool, in essence. These pictures are also from Photolia, of course, and I'm bringing them in via Mini Bridge as smart objects. More about all of that some other time. My name's Eric Renault. Thank you very much for joining me here on this video for Photolia, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.